All right, everyone, welcome to the Advent of Code 2019 in our length through some ad hoc unedited video. Uh, today is day 13, recorded on Friday 13th, and we are doing a new problem of this. Let me reload the calendar, and let's see what we get for today. Uh, care package. As you ponder the solitude of space in the ever-increasing three-hour round trip for messages between you and Earth, you notice that the space mail indicator light is blinking. They have sent me a care package. This is a new game for the ship's arcade cabinet. The arcade is all the way to the end of the ship. Encode software. Ah, God dang else. Alright. And it is my puzzle input. That a primitive screen capable of drawing square tiles on a grid. Oh, more drawing. The software draws tiles on the screen with output instructions. Every three output instructions specify the X position, Y position, okay, and tile ID. The ID is interpreted as fall. Zero is an empty one. Wait, okay, the ID is in, I didn't, I, it's more of a tile type. Okay. The paddle is indestructible, a ball tile. Oh. The sequence output values like 1, 2, 3, 6, 5, 4 would draw horizontal paddle tile. One tile from the left and two tiles from the top and a ball tile. Start the game. How many tiles, block tiles are in the, okay. Uh, I guess it's going to be time to take our little encode computer from uh, where's my encode computer robot code nope okay encode computer I'm going to start extracting that into its own module because I'm making use of it more and more, and uh, I'm getting tired of copy-pasting it since it's apparently fast enough and uh, stable enough now. So module encode, I'm not going to export uh, what are those that I want to have. Boris program. And then I want it also. Spawn program. Collect result was useful as well. And then the rest I think is fine. Those are all I need. Okay. Let's kill this one. And let's get started. So we've got a little example code here that I'm once again, you're going to use example zero and the string input for this one is going to be this. Um, I'm going to save my puzzle input to priv day 13. Oh. All right. So for this one, I think I can just handle the, uh, oh wait, I don't even have an example output. This is the example encode output. So I can only test the uh, printing routine for that. Uh, that sounds good. And my encode computer's results are this. So I'm going to write the base of the program in here, and when I get to printing, 
I will get back to this, assuming that this is my output, my input. So I know that those are going to be integers, and uh, those are going to actually be the output that I'm testing. And I'm going to wire up to base encode computer in here, which is going to be Uh, spell the program where the encode parse program of the advent input for the 13. And the second part here is going to be just a parent. Send me the output to this process for this part. I'm sure it won't work for the rest of it, but that's fine. Then I'm going to and here this one I'm going to ignore what it is. I'm just going to tell me that the program is down and the output is ready to be printed because the thing I'm not necessarily sure is um, you know how long do I have to print all of that output. And the first step does not even um, require me to uh, yeah this one does not even require me to actually print anything it just requires me to know how many block tiles are on the screen um, so I'm going to do the strict minimum I can do to pass this uh, then here I'm going to just collect output and uh, count the type brick for each of them. Ooh, that's the regular expression from yesterday at the bottom of the screen. Alright, um, collect output, that's fine, I'm going to turn it that way. I'm going to, here, convert output, that's going to be a kind of private function that I have, and I'm going to use counting the brick type I have in this, and that should be my example. So, collect the output is going to be receive IO out. Wait a second, okay. So I'm going to convert each step individually because it's a bit easier. Like this. And so here I can do something like convert. Nope, I'm going to keep it that way. to do it that way. The reason why I'm doing this is because I will want to have the x, y positions and types in what I have. And so here I will only go with the output and call it more output. This is, this is essentially just a flush function. And after zero, when I'm done and all the queued messages are gone, I am going to uh, and the accumulator, that's a recursive function. And I can do this because the encode collect result that I have um, in here waits for the final results and all the messages will be in my inbox in order. And so I know that I'm done parsing, I don't have to accumulate anything else, they're all going to be in the buffer. So convert output is going to be able to work on groups of three. So when I'm done here, I'm done. So I'm going to have something like x, y, and type, and then the rest of the list. And I can turn this into x, y, and type of the type, and the rest. And I can just convert output of the rest. And that's a very easy way to chunk the content. And the types I have are here, um, zero is empty. T 
type one is wait a second. Okay, one wall block paddle ball. And it's horizontal paddle because I guess eventually they're going to give me uh, vertical paddles. But wall block type three was the That might be long and annoying down the line, but we'll see. And four is a ball tile. All right. And then I wanted to have count of a given type and a list of output. And to make it fast and effective, I, I could just you know use a list comprehension for this again. But to make it fast and effective, I'm just going to do the thing where it's a recursive function and we know that it's not going to be a factor in the performance of the program in doing this. So I'm still counting the type and for each point that has the same type in the list I count the type of the rest of the list plus one in here and if it's none of these uh, then I just keep counting oops found a little typo here the type the T and the accumulator and that should be my entire thing for this well, yeah type isn't used you're right Oh yeah, smart collect output isn't used, P2 is, I've missed, oh, here we go. All right, so R3 compile, uh, copy pasting, best friend, worst enemy. All right, um, so day 13, example, zero. Okay. Horizontal paddle, which should be one down for two to one down three. Yep. And then six, and a ball six down. Oh, okay. So the example is not actually a good example at all. They consider the part one to be an example, which is probably scary because it it means that Part two is going to be one hell of a pain in the ass. Uh, Avent race 13. I'm still getting zero on this one. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have a brick type. I have a block type. That would explain my terrible output. I have a block type, not a brick type. They're going to make us do a brick breaker thingy, but there we go. 348 of them. 348. And that worked. Okay. Now we get into the real pain. The game didn't run because you didn't put any quarters. Fortunately, it didn't bring any quarters. Memory address is zero, represents the number of quarters that have been inserted. Set it to two to play for free. Uh. Okay. So I'm going to do it bit by bit. So here I will need to expand my uh, program a little bit. Uh, and we have apparently the need to set arbitrary addresses. So what I'm going to do is create this function here. with, uh, you know, the 
this is going to be the base memory of it. From program I and oh wait, I'm already passing a map. I'm already doing that. I don't need to change that program at all. So part two, I'm going to do this bit in here. Um, I'm moving this. This is going to be a map of the program. And the thing I'm going to pass it is going to be um, Now, a map where memory at zero is set to two. Those are the quarters. Okay. We have a joystick, and so I will represent the arcade. This will be a new program, and I might need to make another peer program that runs on the side, but we'll see what we have. Uh, It's going to be zero. I think I see that this is minus one. To be one. I think. Uh, left minus one, right provide one. Now, okay, it also has a segment display capable of showing up a single number that represents the player's current score. When three output expression <laughs> okay minus zero. The third output instruction is a sequence. Okay, so we're going to make an exception here for the counting. And here is going when x is minus one and y is 0, then this is a score, and we skip it. Just so that this function remains correct. Beat the game by breaking all the blocks. <laughs> Screw you. Uh, okay, and that's a that's a really cool one. Uh, okay, so I'm going to uh, probably make a shorter one because this is going to be my input for the thing. I'm going to have to make things a bit different for this part. This is an, an, an interactive program now. So I'm just going to call the function move. It's going to take, so I'm going to take a, a left, a right, and a neutral function. And those are going to be orders I'm going to give to my program directly. So this is going to be neutral. This is going to be left. Uh, this is going to be right. And I'm making them short because that's going to be for my usability of the things. Uh, because I want to not have to type everything all the freaking time. And those are likely going to be... Um, output sending to the program. So I'm going to probably have here to uh, oh here here what I'm going to count instead is going to be um, Oh, 
Oh, but I, I won't be able to do it on collecting the output. So this function won't be required anymore. Uh, okay, so I will need to start a second program. That program needs to know about the um, encode program because it will send input on its behalf. I will need to name the process for it. Um, and here I will probably just call it, you know, give it a name, encode, send it. And here I'm going to have to do the, um, I'm going to type them input. And not IO because the other program will receive IO from the encode interpreter and I want it to be easy to um, to differentiate. And eventually the thing I will probably need to do is tag the IO messages with who sent them. But um, I will try to avoid doing that because I don't, we'll try to avoid doing that for now because I don't know how fancy their things need to be. So um, I'm going to make a simple program here, a gen server or something like that would make sense, but you know what, uh, we don't need it for this. Um, so here I'm just going to spawn link. Um, uh, I need spawn link, uh, I'll call it a cabinet, I'll call it game. It's shorter and it's obvious what it is. Um, the output is fine. I'm going to give it the encode computer. Even that's it. So those are going to be so click result here is going to be fine. That means the game is beaten, and I'm going to send uh, to the encode game the. print results order that's going a single message and I'll just oh wait chilly and send that back to me and when I do that I will uh, kill it slowly but normally, return n, and this is the end of my program, just doing a message passing. So I've got my user input, I've got the game computer, and there I've got uh, part one garbage helper. So a game, I get a bid. This is going to be my initializing function, so I will register and uh, what's the order of these argument it's in the standard library in the Erlang module no it's not in that one we're going to try it the simple way uh, do I have VL I don't have that installed Okay. Name for self. That's the order. All right. And uh, the game will take the uh, bit in memory and I will store its. Uh, yeah, let's give it a state record. That right now only stores the score, which will start at zero, I assume. And I won't need the uh, rest of it. The rest is going to be a loop. Uh, I will need to pass it. Uh, you know. Uh, an IO buffer, which is going to be an empty list by default. 
this IO buffer will accumulate all the instructions until I get to three of them and then I'll put them in based on the type that we have already in the other helpers. So when I'm running the game, I have the bid, I have my state, and I will have an IO buffer. And um, here I have this. I will go with a buffer type. And the buffer type is going to be a list like this, right? And so if I have minus one, zero, and score, my type is going to be score like this. If I have anything else like x, y type, the thing I'm going to return is um, I'm going to index them by type and buffer type. Any other list is going to be in here. I need to type the time. And any other list is going to be uh, any other list is going to be incomplete. I'm going to move these because they're not just garbage helpers anymore. They're part of the game. The thing I don't have for this one is sure I got a coordinate but I don't know when the entire map is refreshed and uh, that worries me that I might need something like cursor support which is not going to be simple to do um, but I'll see what I can get out of it so in this game when I receive IO oops to think as I go. Um, let's make the buffer efficient. Here's the thing I just realized is that I'm going to have these swapped. So I'm going to have the type, the Y, and the X in all the orders I receive them. So here I'm going to have oops, the score, zero and the minus one and complete and here I'm just going to return the buffer as I had it right now and the reason for this is that I'm just going to be able to do something like k's buffer type of io in the buffer and have it extremely cheap uh, and here I'm going to have something like A score of something. When I do that, I loop the state with the score being able to the score and I'm just going to call it buffer, so it's going to be long otherwise. And the buffer is now empty again, and that's a game loop. what I have is incomplete new buffer and then I loop for more input and otherwise what I'm going to have is a type and a coordinate and that will tell me to print a given type at a given coordinate, which I don't know how I'm going to do that part just yet. Um, and then I will loop. Damn it, I type like an idiot. And that 
that's my main base loop here when I receive input n and it's already converted. Actually, this is game state. Controller doesn't have to know that the implementation relies on an encode computer, and if I want it to be right, that means I need to rehab my little joystick control. So F minus one. to the PID the instruction for IO and direction of this. And my controller is now hooked up to the game. Unchanged state here. Oh, oh yeah, I also had um, get score function, I believe. It's caller. It's score. Actually, that's a terrible way to structure my things because I want to care about the argument type distinctly from the function. And I will normalize them to always have the same function type in here, where the first element is the one I watch for all of these. So if someone tries to send game score as an instruction, it's not going to break uh, its score for caller and for these I'm just going to be able to return uh, did I have anything yeah I wanted it to wrap it in a score so that they know what it is they are getting unchanged state and the last one is halt which means I will stop normally and I won't even kill the encode computer. Now the thing I could do here is pass the game the entire input and the program, but like this section could have easily, easily been started by the computer itself. Uh, I mean this part as a whole. Uh, but that's going to be fine the way it is just going to make it easier to kill everything. The encode computer will stop on its own by collecting the result. That's fine. Okay. Now I need to figure out how I print things. What do you mean the record state is undefined? Uh, is it because something earlier. Here we go. Yeah, record declaration is not what I remembered it to be. Print doesn't exist. So now I'm going to do something really, really simple. I print and I know that this is not going to be valid input. Um, yeah, I'm going to give them a space just to make it readable. But the thing I want to do is run the thing and see what kind of input it gives me. So is this exploding? Oh yeah, it's a type. Yeah, a coordinate. I'm just going to. I'm going to get at least some uh, idea of what the thing should be looking like. Uh, day thirteen, part two. Okay. 
Um, so. That's not good. It's entirely hung. Uh, let me see everything that's going on. I don't care. At least a thousand calls. Because the encode computer is no longer there. That's at least helpful. Uh, yes, go. Cool. Oh, damn it. I know what I did. I will need to start. Uh, I will start the game this way because the PID is, out co of course, not wired up properly in terms of where it sends the information. This at least I keep it. Uh, game in here. I'm going to be start game and it's no longer a pit, it's getting a map. I'm sending it a map in here. Okay, uh, this is going to be all parallel and this is actually going to be a good thing because I need this program to run asynchronously if I want to be able to put output in it input in it so let's put all this garbage here uh, For the time being, this is going to be correct. Hold on a second. Restructuring, restructuring, restructuring. So I'm spawning the program. It's going to myself. The PID, I still get it. This gets core. Shenanigans no longer happen. These don't do either. This is no longer needed, all of that. Oops. The thing I'm going to receive instead is um, what encode would have been a collect result. I will get the result with the PID in here, and this will tell me that the program is done. And when I do that, I know I have a score, which I only need to, you know, output format. Oh no. Let's call it the final score. And here it's going to be this little body here. And I know I'm done. The other program is done. I end the result. This is the end of it. Oh yeah, I don't care for that. That's right. Print is unused. Start game is unused. Start game is called here. You idiot. P2 is def. Oh. Let's see what we get. Now it should possibly. Oops. Not hang anymore. Okay, and then if I go, you know what, left. Oh wait, is it redrawing the screen every single time? Zero, one, two, three, four, thirty-six. Okay. Oops. Oh yeah. But now the program is dead because I crashed the entire thing. So let's start it over again. Uh, 
Okay, then it only redraws part of the screen. Okay. So, now let's continue and just in fact interrupt the program. Now it's dead. Here's the thing uh, to draw that properly, I am going to need um, some fancy ass shell printing stuff. I could use um, the uh, redrawing mechanisms that I would have for a shell, but it would be a bit difficult. So um, there's, I know this, and I hope it's going to work if I go back enough to my search. Uh, there's this libra library in our line called C Echo. Or I don't know, I think that's how it's supposed to be typed. That is in Curse's library for Erlang. That, yeah, I'm logged in as my user on GitHub. That's good. And it has a lot of dependencies. Where's the README? So I can just compile it, start with the attributes, and get everything I need in there. Uh, so I'm going to go play with this a bit. And I have never used it. I wanted to do it for a long period of time. Uh, I'm going to run the base programs and probably need to experiment with it on my side because it's going to be long. But at the same time, maybe you will enjoy um, having that stuff going around. So let's add a new dependency. It's no longer just recon. It's just for debugs. I also have. Uh, is it on the hex? Let's see if I, uh, I don't even know how to enter a new address in this text browser. I just kill the session and start a new one. So hex.pm, do I have that one as a package? No results found. Okay, so I'm going to need to use the source for it. Uh, uh, as in the fifth browser, that's the username. I think that's the full URL, if I recall it. I'm going to get it in branch master because I don't care, it's going to be locked anyway. And yeah, that's working. So what does this export? OK. Um, it has a little Hello World program. I don't need to start the C echo application. So let me do this in my little computer in here. I will just ensure that it is running. Where is my spawn program? Uh, game starting. So uh, Okay, it totally hijacks the TTL. Hmm. So this part is going to need to be a bit different. Eh, that's fine. It's possible that I will no longer have my just left, right, buttons for things. This is going to be discoveries. Write the string. OK. That should be rather easy. It breaks by default, not a problem. 
control over get key input that's done this way okay so I will need to get my input explicitly start the mover because the thing that they had in here for this one was move address string but they probably have a no I don't need to calculate the position I'm assuming it will fill my screen fit my screen I don't mind it just giving me the position already so Take the screen to show the change. All right, and do it again. So that's an interesting way to do it. I will change how my thing is structured here uh, because the input is no longer going to be done that way, and the result will still be received as that final message. This is fine, but here after let's say 50 milliseconds that will give us time to receive more input in a continuous manner or even shorter 10 yeah 50 milliseconds sounds safe because i don't know how fast it is um, it is no longer this that i'm doing i'm going to have to ugh. i'm going to have to refresh the screen and show all the changes that have been buffered in my print calls in multiple places and that is going to be fine and upon refreshing then I will use the little IO function that they had a bit earlier when they were doing the control the get key input here and so that's going to be a character and here's the thing I'm not sure is if they're going to be able to handle keyboard keys and if they can that's going to be really really cool I'm guessing it should be able to and so uh, let's see going to be annoying uh, I'm going to believe that here let me get to that's going to be uh, in curses arrow keys get ch function the keypad should be enabled with the keys arrow keys otherwise no the constant defined blah, blah, blah. okay maybe there are a few constants for this it's going to be the ascii code you know what i'm going to do it like a true gamer it's going to be wasd so if i get a uh, I'm going to uh, send myself the left instruction, which is going to be um, and D is going to be right, and any other key, I'm going to consider them to be neutral. And so then I can loop. Okay, let's see how we print with this CXO stuff. Uh, so I will, the coordinates are going to be fine. It's going to be X and Y. And uh, the character I want to print was going to be based on the type. And so types of characters I had where let me open a vertical split if it is empty I'm going to return only white space 
if it is a wall, I will return this because it's going to work on horizontal or vertical. Oh wait, a wall and a block are not going to be the same. Uh, yeah, let's do it that way. I don't know what's the difference with a block. A block is probably a thing I need to break instead, so I'm going to give it a star. No, that's going to be, yeah, let's do it this way. This is going to be a wall. This is going to be a block. And the ball is going to be a little oaky. To be easy to see. And then I'm left with the horizontal paddle is going to be the equal sign. And that's all I have for this one. And so, uh, let me close that display. How are they printing text? I think this is the only thing they do. Move address and a string. Horizontal, vertical, and then the print. So I'm going to use this. And the string is just going to be Uh, a character I have, single one, that's going to be, oh, they're going A, Y, and X, makes sense there. So what do we have? Cool typo, good typists. Mm, let's see what we get with, now my input is all kinds of busted because of the uh, shell work I've been doing and bugs in rebar but let's see okay that seems to be cool so I do nothing I do nothing oops okay I know what these are so um, p2 I'm going to just go like call this as an e script and uh, this is going to be a script only. That's my result. And the Erlang e scripts, which I am no longer going to need this cool little functions. The Erlang e script is going to take a main function that has some input that I don't care about. And here. What I'm going to do for that one, since I'm linked to the game, uh, yep, I'm going to do exactly that process. Uh, trap exit to true, which means I get the dead signal and receive um, exit from PID with any reason. I don't care for it. I am going to just edit stop with a return value of zero. Well, yeah, reason. Zero, eh, anything else if reason is not equal to normal, return one, I don't care. is not exported. I'm going to export main, main one. And now I'm in a buffer that's already kind of uh, messed up, but anyway. Yeah, that's the thing. I broke my input already. All right. So I have a comment there for a script is generating a script of files. Okay. 
hopefully that generates. Let me get to. Uh, uh, W3M, rebar 3org configuration. I th nah, that's not the right. I'll just follow the links. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, we have a garbage JavaScript site that has a lot of them, but I want the configuration files. Uh, configure. Oh, God. It's broken for this. All right. Um, I'll pause this. Go figure out how to build my A script and get the config back. That took a second. I just went to the documentation in the browser that supports doing interesting stuff. And I'll have all these options. Oops. Go back here. I have all these options here that can exist. So, uh, the main app name is going to be Advent. Let's call it day 13 for this one including apps, all the other ones in its depth. So I'm going to include C echo in that one. Uh, the main module, yeah, that's how I overwrite it. So that's going to be day 13. And yeah, the shebang, I'm going to leave them, the comments, I'm going to leave them as they are. Uh, I'm going to keep this configuration as is. Here, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to kill that terminal. I'm going to kill this one here. And rebar 3, a script eyes and see what we get. So I should have an e script now. It should be in build default and day 13. E not directory. Is this because the main app is the advent thing is? How do I do my advent of code thing? That should be the code private directory here that exists, but uh, all right. You know what? I'm going to have the uh, path here. I'm going to take my input in my own hands. So, okay, binary is equal to file read file on the path and I'm going to pass here binary to list of this. I don't care for the encoding. I'm going to uh, re-scriptize my thing and here I'm going to pass it the path directly to day 13. Okay. Really? That's a bummer. So it doesn't work as an e-script anyway. All right. I'm going to keep this bit here. I'm just going to, it's not callable as an e-script. I'm just going to call, <laughs> you know what, main priv day 13. Don't care. Let's see if that works. Oops, I went back a bit too far in my my thing. All right. that works in a new terminal that doesn't have broken input. So let's try it again in the shell. This is a bit annoying. I'm not aware of how C echo is supposed to run, but yeah, it doesn't like my, there's a thing with the control characters that is extremely blowing up on this. Okay. So it's possible that the program is fine, but it's mostly my cursor and addressing that is working kind of wonky. So I'm going to go read a little bit of these things and see what we get because I got the new position. That's fine. I don't care. Oh, unless it's a, 
relative position that we have. Set attribute, no echo. So that might be an interesting one. Uh, where was I? I need a new window, I guess. So I'm going to go with and curses calls and see what they have. The hacker's guide to blah blah blah. There's a lot of them, I don't know if they're good. You know, what was the name of the call I was looking at? It's all my buffers are out of order. God damn. No echo. It might just be that. And curses, no echo, and let's see what that brings me to. Input options. Maybe macros, yeah, okay, but where is it defined? Do I have this? No. Okay. So let's assume that anyway, my garbage results were due to um, having this uh, C echo, no echo. And that was just like my control characters when I was pressing cursors, giving me uh, sass in that one. I don't know what C break is. Who cares? We'll see. But now my shell is broken again. Let's see. So I'm using, oh yeah, that worked. So I'm just going to use, yep, that was the thing. Oh, I died. Oh God. <laughs> I need to be good at this game now. Okay, I think now I'm technically in contact. I'm going to follow the little thing step. This is going to take forever. Oh, I get it. I think I do. So <laughs> I don't have to play the thing in interactive mode at all. Here's the thing I'm going to do. Oh, that's clever. I don't need to output it. I'm going to keep outputting it because I do enjoy being able to read this though. Um, but here's one thing I'm going to do. Uh, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. And this is going to be an option I'm going to pass to the game here. And you'll see what I have in mind. I'm going to pass it uh, the option to cheat. And here, what I'm going to have is a bunch of options. And uh, I think there is to cheat mode equals to false by default. But here, what I'm going to do is cheat is equal prop list get of cheat in the options with a default value set to false. And here, what I'm going to do is that when I'm printing, I'm also going to pass it the state. And this is going to be a little fun one. Uh, where instead, it's not going to be cheat, and it's going to be AI mode. And my AI is going to be extremely, extremely simple with it. Um, And to do this, I'm going to need to. I'm going to cheat the hell out of that thing with the process dictionary. And uh, if so, this is going to be the normal mode with the state, which I don't care about. But when I get into. Uh, When I get into a ball mode, 
x and y and that the state mentions that yeah I'm going to do it that way that's fine and that the state mentions that I am in AI mode set to true Uh, I'm going to also carry here the type for the horizontal paddle. And what I'm going to do is very, very simple. I'm going to store uh, in the process dictionary the paddle position being X, just the position, straight up position in there. And I'm going to put this in my process dictionary and then print um with the position and the state with AI set to false. And since I don't return the AI and I don't keep it, it's just going to go print into the regular mode. And here what I'm going to do is case get panel position and uh my default is going to be I think I have a default on that one. Let's see get key undefined but if I put a default do I get the default nope okay all right so I'm going to be position of the paddle is going to be this if this is this I return the same one otherwise paddle pass is the what I return and and so what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to take the um, and I'm going to be the px. I don't care for the y position of the paddle actually. And um, if px is equal to x, then I need to do nothing. So I will just uh, okay, that's a no op. If, and I'm using here the little Richard O'Keefe way of doing things, if the paddle position is greater than x, then I am going to cheat. And uh, I no longer have to pit. Oh! Changing the program. PID is now PID in here. It goes into state with the rest. No default value. It has to be specified. I don't know why I didn't do this the first time around. Uh, now this is simpler. I will have access to the PID for the rest of everything I do anyway. Okay, uh, back to this one. And the PID is PID. I will send it the IO direction. And I'm going to go, uh, if my X, then I'm going to go left. And if BX is smaller than X, then I am going to send it the direction. Actually, yeah. yeah. I'm going to set it to neutral so it never needs my intervention to run. And then I will just print ball x y as usual to a state where AI is set to false. And so I fall through to the default one and I just injected myself as a little AI in that one. And let's see how that works. Still the same typo. That could be very fun. Oh yeah, I'm just in a regular shell for this one. That's not the right terminal. Oops. 
I think I beat the game. <laughs> uh, okay, so before I halt, then uh, where's my here? Uh, let's give me at least one second to see what the hell went on in there. Okay, that's a bit of a bummer. <laughs> it went too fast, uh, but I'm guessing that this is a point sixteen. Uh, I think that was a original. Yeah, okay, it worked. Uh, so here's what I'm gonna do, though. I'm going to give me my give myself the time to refresh because I just want to see the game go through. It worked. It worked fine, but. That was sad. It was too fast. So to do that, I'm guessing I will have to. Uh, I'm going to leave it at 50. That's fine enough for me when I'm playing. But I'm going to go into my um, little paddle here and give me a forced refresh rate on these uh, when I'm in AI mode because I want to see it going on. The ball is going to move each time the paddle moves anyway, so that should work fine. I just want to see it play itself. Okay, that was still too fast, so I'm going to <laughs> uh, just give me 10 milliseconds between these frames, please. At least it's going to be a bit slower. I just want to see it go. Nice. The ball is so fast that the cursor doesn't have the time to show it, I think. It just shows the cursor. And that's beating the game. That's a cool one. I'm going to actually, tomorrow is going to be today for, to be day 14, but I'm just going to let this one play instead because this is cool looking. All right, so uh, for day 14, hopefully we get something that is as cool as this little one because I really, really like having my deck game. That's the first time I play with output in the shell and I'm certainly going to do it again. This day was definitely worth it. That is cool little stuff. Woo. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to cut the video the moment this ends. I'm hoping you enjoyed this.